Good evening. Good evening. So good to see you here this evening. Beautiful weather again today. So often it seemed like our Advent services would be hindered by snow or ice. So we appreciate this. Our service this evening is going to focus on Jesus, the son of Abraham. As you read through the As We Gather part, you get a gist idea of what we're going to be talking about for this evening's service. But I would have you please stand for the opening invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord promised Abram, I will bless those who bless you. Paul reminds us that Abraham's faith was counted to him as righteousness. It will be counted to us who believe in him who raised Jesus. Jesus said, Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. You may be seated for the reading of the psalmody because it is rather lengthy. The psalm rejoices that God kept his promise to Abraham to give Abraham the land and that he remembers his everlasting covenants. He remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praise to him. Tell all his wonders. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the word that he commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan, as your portion for an inheritance. For he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. So he brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing. And he gave them the lands of the nations, and they took possession of the fruit of the people's soul. That they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. The great O Antiphon looks beyond earthly kingdoms to eternal salvation. O King of the nations, the ruler they long for, the cornerstone uniting all people. Come and save us all, whom you form on our clay. And we sing three verses of the following hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Actually, the first two are from the hymn, the third one is a special verse made up just for the evening service.
first reading for this second Wednesday in Advent from Genesis chapter 12. The Lord promises then Abram that through him all the nations of the world will be blessed. A reading from Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people that they had acquired in Haran. And they set out to go to the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oak of Moreh. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. Lord, have mercy on us. People who share the faith of Abraham are only exiles on the earth. We seek a better country. A reading from Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had not been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, excuse me, if they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had an opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. O Lord, have mercy on us. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Faithful Abraham rejoiced to see the day when his promised son appeared in human history. A reading from John chapter 8. The Jews answered Jesus, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. 
The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, If anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? And Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. O Lord, have mercy on us. To your offspring I will give this land. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go. Before Abraham was, I am. More than only celebrating Abraham's faith, this next hymn raises our sights to the better country God promises us by grace. And we sit, sing the selected verses. You may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you this evening from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this evening's message, since we're looking at Jesus, the son of Abraham, is from Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, which are printed again at the back of your bulletins if you wish to follow along there. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. This is God's word. Amen. Let us pray. Your gracious Heavenly Father, as we look tonight, not just at Abraham, but as Jesus being Abraham's son, we realize that your connection with Jesus to Abraham was more than just a physical one. It was a spiritual one. And that the land promised to Abraham was more than just a physical land. It was a heavenly land. Help us to glean that from tonight's reading, Lord, and apply it then to our lives as we too look forward to a heavenly land because earth is just a temporary place. Heaven is our home. Amen. People who research their genealogy, their ancestry, often hope to discover that they've been related to some great historical figure. Perhaps some distant relative of theirs fought with George Washington in the Battle of Yorktown. Or maybe their ancestor was a swashbuckling pirate. Many genealogies are fueled by a curiosity, a curiosity to see what kind of wild stories might be discovered and how far back can one trace their roots? Jesus' family tree in Matthew goes back some 2,000 years. From Jesus all the way back to Abraham, that's a 2,000 year span. So not only is Jesus a descendant of King David, as we talked about last week, but his line goes all the way back to what the Jews called Father Abraham. It's the kind of genealogy that would thrill even the most casual genealogist. 2,000 years. Imagine if you could trace your ancestry back 2,000 years. Well, that would take you back to the birth of Christ, back to the reign of Caesar Augustus. I don't think most of us would be able to trace the roots back that far because there was not the written records that we have today. And apart from the Jewish faith, there was oftentimes not even the oral records of who was related to whom. And most of us wouldn't go back to Caesar Augustus anyhow because most of us were not Roman. We were maybe Celtic or Gallic or Norse. If we could trace our ancestry back even if we could go back as far as the 1500s, we would probably be content with that much, just 500 years. So you can imagine that the tracing of Jesus's lineage all the way back to Abraham was certainly a source of pride and joy for any Jew of Jesus's day. It was the lineage by which they had long ago received the land in which they were now living. But for those who truly came to understand, it wasn't the land, but it was Jesus himself who mattered. And Matthew tells us about this genealogy all the way back to Abraham in order that we too would understand that through the son, Isaac, God promised a land. And through his greater son, 
Jesus, Abraham and his descendants have inherited a greater country. Now God's plan to make Abraham the father of many nations seemed preposterous. The Lord had called Abram first from the land of Ur. That was at the lower part of the Euphrates and Mes um, I can't think of the other one. <laughs> the films of Mesopotamia region in Iraq, the two rivers there. It was in the lower part of Iraq today, land of Ur. God called Abraham from there to go up to the land of Haran, which is at the top of the Fertile Crescent. And from there, he told him to go to a new land where he would make him into a great nation. Even though Abraham was well advanced in years, in fact, God goes so far as to tell Abram that all the families on earth would be blessed through him. And then God promised Abram that Sarai would give birth to a son and that his descendants would be as, as many as the stars in the sky and the grains of sand on the seashore. Abram was old. Sarai was considered barren. All the evidence seemed to point to this being an impossibility. But we know that all things are possible with God. Abram believed God's word, and the Lord counted it to him as righteousness. From Abraham would eventually come Jesse. Excuse me, Isaac. From Abraham would come Isaac, then Esau and Jacob, then his descendants, and they would continue to grow in number all the way to the child born to Joseph and Mary, a fulfillment of God's promise to the patriarch Abraham. Now, most people who spend their time researching their ancestry are disappointed to find out that there's no one particularly famous in their family tree. Most people, when they dig back into their history, find that their ancestors were all common, ordinary people, most of whom came over from small towns somewhere in Europe, towns that don't even exist anymore today. And the similar thing could be said for Jesus's family tree. Mostly common, ordinary people, from places that maybe today don't exist. Now we think a lot of Abraham today, don't we? But do you realize Abraham was really nothing when he started out with? In fact, when the Lord first called him from Ur, he was not even worshiping God. He was a pagan and God called him. And then he believed God. And then he followed God's direction to go up to Haran. And his wife, Sarah, she must have been quite attractive because she seemed to catch the attention of two different kings. Abraham was so cowardly that both times he claimed she was his sister rather than stand up and defend his wife's honor. And when Sarah directed him to try for an heir through her maidservant, Hagar, because they're thinking, well, we're not getting a son and we're not getting any younger, Abraham again failed to honor Sarah and instead had a child outside of God's plan. That's an unsurprisingly common discovery in many family trees. All of a sudden, here is this child on the outside. This father of many nations, Abraham, also passed on to his descendants a legacy of lies and lust, deceit and adultery. So no, Father Abraham was not anyone special. He was just another sinner. 
like us, like his forefather Adam, who would pass on to all those who would come after him, a heritage, hard hearts, and sinful things. Now in Jesus' day, there were definitely those who found security in the fact that they were descendants of Abraham. They felt that they then had a source of special standing before God. Those who claimed to be descendants of Abraham were certain that they never were, nor never would be, slaves of anyone. Even though they had been slaves in Egypt for 400 years, and now were, in a sense, slaves under Rome. The ridiculousness of such thinking notwithstanding, they failed to see how they had been enslaved by their own sin. Like Abraham before them, sin had also enslaved them. And unless they were brought to faith, the promise of God to Abraham would be null and void. Now it wasn't that the promise of God would fail them, but that the descendants of Abraham had failed God, rejecting both the promise and the promised one. We are children of Abraham, because we are also those who cannot be saved by our lineage, our obedience, or our good works. Like Abraham, we have failed again and again, fallen into the same sins over and over and over again, just like the Pharisees. And like them, we have trusted in our family, or our status, or our denomination. The only difference between Abraham and the Pharisees is faith. They were all sinners, but the difference was that Abraham was fully convinced God was able to do what he had promised. Friends, Abraham is a lesson in humility for all of us. We don't place our hope and trust in a birthright, but in the one who was born for us. God looked down upon Abram and Sarai and their need, and in his love and mercy promised them a son. God looked down upon all his children. And his solution, his answer, his perfect way of making things right, was to again promise a son. Now God most certainly kept his promise to Abram by sending Isaac as a son. But the ultimate way that God met the need of Abram and Sarai and all of his creation was by sending his own son, Jesus. Remember how God once asked of Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac? He did it to test Abraham's faith. Well, Jesus was the son of Abraham who was sacrificed in place of Isaac. The promise that God made to Abraham is fulfilled each time a child or an adult is marked by the sign of the cross over their forehead and over their heart and is baptized into the name of the triune God, just as was Journey Bowl brought into the family of God this past Sunday. It was a promise from God. 
And it is also accomplished when the word of God is proclaimed and heard or read, and people then are brought to saving faith through the working of the Holy Spirit. And so even today, God continues to raise up children for Abraham as you are made sons and daughters of Abraham through faith in Jesus. During World War II in England, the most ominous sound that one could hear was the air raid siren. For nine straight months, the Germans attacked first Britain's airfields and then their cities with nightly bombing raids. The sound would start off softly, but then continue until it reached an ear-deafening wail. This constant threat of sirens going off led to dread every evening as the sun set. As it got dark outside, covered their windows to hide the light, fear set in. And it was during this time of fear that the Reverend Eric Milner White, who was serving as Dean of the King's College in Cambridge, understood the people's fear, and he wrote a prayer for their uncertainty. This is what he wrote. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending. By paths as yet untrodden and through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Those words would have been appropriate to describe the uncertain path that Abraham walked as he trudged towards a new, unseen land. But he walked by faith, not by sight. He walked forward, trusting that God was leading him and supporting him. In our days, we are beset by so many and such great temptations all around us. Life in this world means that the threat of mental stress is always there. Our fears today are not necessarily for impending bombs. But nevertheless, we fear or worry. We worry about doctor's appointments or fear expensive car repairs or coming down with the COVID virus. We have anxiety over our uncertain future. Will our businesses and factories stay open? Will I still have a job? Will I be able to live on my retirement, social security, and a fortunate pension? We have those fears and worries. But God forgives us for our fears and doubts for the sake of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit sanctifies and keeps us in faith even when all around us things could drive us to despair. But we do not despair like those who don't believe, like those who have no hope. Our confidence is that God has made us sons and daughters of Abraham by faith in Christ. And we, like Abraham, are looking forward to a better country, the heavenly one, 
the land of promise. Therefore, you and I face each day with good courage as we walk by faith and not by sight. And as we wait for the fulfillment of the promised land that lies ahead on the day of resurrection. And so we are bold to claim Abraham as our ancestral father. Not because of something special about him or something special about us, but rather because, like him, we believe the precious promises of God. And God always keeps his promises. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please rise for prayer. Lord Jesus, guide and protect clergy and lay leaders of your church. Enable them to lift people's hearts and minds to look beyond global pandemics natural disasters, and political upheavals to see the eternal kingdom, which you have graciously opened to all people who trust in you for life and health and peace. Bless those who till the soil, manage farms, transport supplies, and distribute food and clothing where they are needed. Son of David, Almighty Lord, Give wisdom and courage to those who lead governments, command armed forces, and maintain order in society. Give them hearts to seek peace, so that warfare with neighbor states and civil strife within them give way to prosperity, health, and cooperation. Increase our faith to depend on your eternal promises of the better country that awaits us by grace. Son of Abraham, Jesus, light of the world, open the hearts of all who are burdened by their scandals and other past sins. Surround them with faithful people to tell them about your coming in human history, to give yourself for them. Protect and guide all law enforcement personnel, first responders, health care workers, and counselors. Help them balance justice, mercy, and compassionate care so that many may have their lives repaired and hope restored. Son of scandal, gracious Lord, cared for by your adopted human father, Joseph. Remember people like him, those who have been forgotten, whether dispossessed, incarcerated, or isolated for any reason. Remember not their sins and iniquities, but give them a sense of your abiding presence. Nurture in us all a love for your will, so that we obediently do whatever you ask. Son of Joseph, servant Savior, born in a stable to a lowly virgin, remind us again that you turn the world's ways upside down. Give strength to the weak, Lift up the downtrodden, provide hope for the despairing, announce peace to the distraught, and proclaim eternal forgiveness to all burdened by their sin. Son of Mary, Lord Jesus, you promised your ancestor Abraham that through him all the families of the earth would be blessed. Strengthen the faith we share with him in your gracious promises. Grant that during our sojourn on this earth, we ever look forward to the better country you have prepared for us. Son of Abraham, hear our prayer. We pray Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself 
my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may the almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we sing the closing hymn. That's fine. And three four hundred. Fine. Half of the girl. 